In this video, I'll address some of the early adopter experiences that Fisker owners are having and whether or not I should go forward with my sport order. Spoiler alert, I'm probably going to do it. But before we get into that, let's take a survey. Feel free to answer any or all of these individual questions in your own survey down in the comments below. It really helps other owners and other potential buyers make the best decision. And thanks in advance. How satisfied are you with your Fisker vehicle ownership experience so far? Has your Fisker Ocean required or does it currently require any service items? since you've taken possession of the vehicle. Please tell us the primary concern that led you to submit a service request. Have your vehicle service needs been addressed or are they currently being addressed to your satisfaction? How would you rate the communications you've received from our customer relations team? Has our team been able to address your questions or provide service with professionalism, in a friendly manner, in a timely fashion? In the future, how far would you be willing to drive to have your vehicle serviced at a Fisker certified service center? Do you currently currently have a pending service issue? And do you have any additional comments, suggestions, or feedback regarding Fisker's vehicle service? Let me know your responses in the comments below. Now let's talk about the early adopter penalty. The term early adopter is not one size fits all. It's not a knit cap, for example. I have two vehicles that will never have a service center in my state. Is that risky? Does it make me an early adopter? I have a massive solar panel array in my side yard. Is that risky? Does that make me an early adopter? I have a lithium backup battery that will run my entire house for a day in a closet in my basement. Is that risky? Does that make me an early adopter? Is this the definition of early adopter, a person who embraces new technology or tries a new product before most others? Or is the definition of an early adopter someone who is willing to suffer extreme penalty in order to be the first to do something? If hundreds of thousands of people do something in one state, because there are cosmic incentives, but only a few hundred in another at the same time because there are fixed specific penalties, is the person among a few hundred an early adopter? Or is early adopter simply a term that people use to brag about having things that others don't? I think early adopter can be a feeling you are the only person in the room, in the building, in the area doing something because what you are doing is simply that new. And that feeling can be bad or good depending on the current circumstances. Embedded within the context of this comment was a very clear and obvious attempt to create shame. If you don't buy this unfinished, totally unreasonable for you, extreme penalty of an automobile from a company that may not exist soon, then you don't deserve to be one of us. Which is funny because where I live, I am constantly being shunned for personifying the precise identity of an early adopter crazy person. And yet at the same time, there is a lot of truth to what's being said here. When I got my Tesla, I was a mail carrier and I worked 65 hours a week minimum. I wasn't concerned about budget at all. But in 2023, we adopted a son. And I've been freelancing for a while now. So my circumstances are definitely different than when I reserved the ocean sport. So which am I? A poor coward who refuses to take the road less traveled out of a contentious fear? Or a true maverick paving his own path to the future through uncharted territory? Don't answer that. Let's use real world evidence and your experiences to find the true result. Let's start with the drive. Right now it's snowing outside. So let's precondition the car. I would have to sacrifice this if I wanted an ocean sport. It's promised, but not real yet. However, winter is real. And it's really starting to come down out there. Luckily, I have all-wheel drive, which I would also sacrifice if I get the Ocean Sport. My car's plugged in and I just leave it that way all the time because, well, I don't need to worry about that if I get a software update. It's nice and warm here in the garage. In fact, I don't even have to set my climate control very high because the car's already warm, including my seats and the steering wheel. And my destination is already in place because I sent it to my car earlier. Would you wanna drive in this without all-wheel drive? I sure wouldn't, but at least I know if something happens, I can record it and then watch it later. I had no alerts or chimes or anything like that during my entire drive. It was quiet, comfortable, oh, and look, Ma, no hands. And if this company truly has 65,000 reservations, then why is one of the first 15,000 a model that is not only not homologated for the country it is about to be sold in, but also the least profitable of all the models. Don't get me wrong, I love the Fisker Ocean, but the reason I made this channel is because every person's experience is gonna be different, including mine. You may have a really old car that you're switching to an EV, and the Fisker Ocean is gonna be a great performer compared to it. But how can I recommend, let alone go through with the purchase, when I'm recommending you do the best thing for you as far as an EV, and the Fisker Ocean for me isn't the best thing as far as an EV. Now I'm gonna let them deliver it to the States and update it. 
I'm even going to go look at it if they'll let me pick it up. I'm concerned about the delivery because of the registration papers. I'm concerned with the registration because a third party is registering it. And I'm concerned with the service experience because I live at least 300 miles from anyone anywhere who's going to be able to come and see a Fisker Ocean. So it's still coming and I'm going to do the best I can to give it every opportunity and take delivery of it. But I want to know about your Fisker Ocean experiences. You guys have been great about sharing your experiences with me both at Adams EV Reviews at Yahoo.com and down in the comments below if you'd like to do either. Please keep your experiences coming. You guys are the reason I make these videos. And with that said, let's actually look at some of your experiences. Still waiting for a tech to call and schedule a service. The software looks like junk, and that's the experience of an EV in my opinion. My Sport was ordered in January 2020, is at sea, and I'll take delivery. I too love my Fisker, however, it really takes someone to be patient about the glitches, delays, inconsistencies, etc. Hence the reason I kept my 2006 Prius. I think if I could keep my Model Y and get the Ocean, there's no question of me getting it. And that's definitely going to be my major attempt. Good luck, customer service and support is horrible. And there's also the issue that I may not be able to insure it because it doesn't exist. And I can't sell it because Fisker is still selling them. You don't have to wait for one of these vehicles at all. You can just go buy one, which means anyone who wants to get rid of their Ocean is going to take a big hit to their bottom line. I personally think you are overthinking this. I have 4,400 miles on mine and am loving it. I'm just mad I didn't get the interest rate you could get. And that's another thing. I got a 2.9% APR on the Model Y because that was the industry standard at the time. I canceled my Sport a month ago. I bought a Model Y and I love it. It's not unique, but everything works. There is no guarantee it will ever be fully done. Why would you pay full price for that? I'm not at all impressed with the Fisker Ocean 1. So many glitches in my first six weeks of owning. Eight weeks is a long time and a lot can change. I'll be frank with you, there are no two owners who have the same experience. All you have to do is follow Fisker's stock price. The company will not survive. And that is the Fisker Early Adopter Penalty. And because it's the holidays, I really want to let you guys know that I'm so thankful you found value in my channel and the content I produce. If you think that the content I produce is valuable and want to continue to support the channel, you can now join the YouTube memberships. You'll get early access to every video. It's only $2.99 a month. And if you're not familiar with the YouTube memberships, which is at the bottom of this video, if you're watching on a smart device, then you can always go to patreon.com a slash 304, where I am also beginning early access to every video. I can't thank you enough for all your support. It means the world. Subscribe for more and check out my Model Y video here. We'll see you on the next one. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you.